Good morning everyone and welcome back. So in today's video, I am going to be taking you through uh, how it is that we prep does for breeding season. Um, obviously the rest of our does have already had our breeding season protocol months ago, but we have one doe that we purchased late in the season. We've been holding her back um, on purpose to breed later for hopefully some late show season babies. Um, but anyway, in this video, I talk about selenium and copper, and these are two, BOCI, I should say, has selenium and vitamin E, and the selenium and the copper that I talk about, um, they both can be toxic to goats if given in too large of a dose, and so I just wanted to put that out there. We have spent years working with different vets, researching, talking to different breeders, um, our own trial and error to find what works best for our farm, and um, these protocols that we've been using, we've been using for a few years now, and we've been very successful um, with them and with our conception rates and the health of our goats. And so the reason that I come to you talking about selenium and copper first is because these can both be toxic. And so we're here in Nebraska. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because if you're in Ohio or California, or even if you're watching this video from, I don't know, New Zealand, your goats could very well need something very, very different than what our goats do in terms of minerals, what supplements they need, if they need supplemented at all. Um, and so I just wanted to put this out there, find a vet, do some research, find a breeder that you trust that you feel has been successful with, um, sorry for the wind, it's really windy here, um, that you feel has been successful with, with whatever it is that they use for mineral supplementation. Um, and then create your own protocols. This is just to show you what we do, how we do it, um, and we've had a lot of success with it. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks. So today what we're going to be doing is Misty is the only doe left for the year that needs to be bred. Um, she, we bought her at the end of September and we decided to kind of hold her off from the rest of the group in hopes to maybe get some late season show babies out of her. So we'll have to see um, what we can get. But I thought this could be a good time to kind of run you through what it is that we do for our breeding prep. Uh, we will be putting her in with one of our bucks. I think we're gonna put her in with Brett. Uh, Freak Show has the possibility to throw some really big babies and Misty's a first timer and I don't want anything bad to happen to Misty or her babies. So, We'll probably end up putting her in with Brett. Brett has more um, average size babies, if you will. But so what we're gonna do is this is how, um, whenever we work through, work our goats through, whether it be individually or um, through the shoot every three months, this is the sheet. I created this, it's nothing fancy, but it's just to keep track of what it is that we did, what it is we saw, if there was anything um, worth mentioning for that. Oh, I apologize for the wind, it's really crazy here today. Um, but so anyway, what we're going to do today is I'm going to run through what we do for our does before breeding season to get them get them ready. Like I said, she's an oddity, usually we do the whole herd, but she's the only one left, and so this will be a good, a good, uh, good uh, little run through. So what we're going to do first is, here, let me get a little bit more organized. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check her the matcha. Now my card probably needs to be redone, but this is just a print off card that I laminated and this shows what we're checking for. And so I'll set that, I'll put it in my mouth. Well, here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, the lighting is not the best in here right now to do this the way it should be done, but you put pressure on the top eyelid so that the bottom pops out and I'm not gonna be able, you want, the, you want to see that inner. So she has some pretty good pink and it's not the smooth, here, I'm gonna go, you wanna follow me around this side. Um, this side has a little bit better lighting. So we're gonna check her for matcha. What we're doing is we're checking to see if she's anemic and if she needs to be wormed. Um, so it's that like second layer of skin. And based on the card, I'm actually gonna put her at like a three. So she needs to be wormed today. Um, others maybe would call her safe. I would rather her just make sure that she gets entirely taken care of. And so what that means for us today, we try to use the lowest class of warmer possible. Our reasoning for that is we do not want to build resistance. Are you gonna be naughty? Um, we don't wanna build resistance in our herd. And so we are gonna be using 
Let's see here. We're going to be using Safeguard for goats. It's a dewormer. Again, this is the absolute lowest class of wormer that you can use, but we use the two wormer system. And so we are going to be using um, Zymectrin Gold. It's actually a horse wormer, but it has Ivermectin and Praziquantil in it. So we'll worm her with this and we'll worm her with, and I just realized I don't think I brought enough syringes. So we're going to double dip here. Do you want to touch base on the difference uh, in wormers that we use based on if they're pregnant or not? Oh, so really the one rule of thumb that you follow with pregnant does, uh, not that we're not careful as a whole with what wormers we use, but um, the one wormer, there it is, a little bigger. This syringe is too so small, so we're going to have to do it a few times. Um, Usually, I should, before I answer that question, usually what we do is we weigh them. I don't have the scale in here today. I'm going to eyeball her at probably about a solid 130. I feel that's a good, that's a yeah. good weight, weight for her. Um, but Valbazin. Valbazin is one rumor that I avoid at all costs during pregnancy. Um, apparently, it's it's safe after 45 days. I guess my point is if it's not safe during the first 45, I don't know why I'd want to use it for you know, like the rest of the time, the other 100 days. But anyway, we're going to use today is our safeguard. I dose it at its oral, and I dose it at one, um, one cc per 10 pounds. And I'm going to put her, this is, unfortunately, I grabbed too small, and this is a uh, 6 cc syringe. So we're going to have to give this a couple times. Oh, come on, Mom. She's probably going to bite me. Oh, well, we got most of that one in. Okay, let's give her another one. And again, um, we will check her here in a couple weeks just to make sure that her, her famacha has come back. And another way, so, oh, you little too. We don't usually use this stand so I can get my hand in there. I don't want to break my finger off of the bar. Come on. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, Another thing that we do, um, it has been, I'll have to find the article if there's anyone that is interested, but there is um, research-based evidence that, that proves that copper bolusing with the little copper rods, so orally with the little copper, little copper bolus, that um, can help com combat um, barbicle worm, and then that can also improve so if you don't have a barbicle worm, you don't have as many anemic does, or you don't struggle with anemia, and they're also healthier because they have copper. So um, that is one benefit, and that's why we copper bowls. We'll do that here in a second. Um, this is dosed at three times the horse weight. Um, and so like here, so I'm going to put her at 130 pounds, and obviously this is a rough approximation, so don't, don't shoot me for. So there's about 500 left in this tube, so at 130 times three, is what about 360 right, three, 390 so about 400 pounds so this is a 500 pound dose i'm just going to give her this isn't um a wormer that the threshold what's the right word i'm looking for it's like there's a good tolerance yeah there's to it. there's a there's a wide enough margin of error for this one that i'm not concerned about overdosing her we we don't want to say but we did have an accident where one of these lock rings did not lock and we ended up shooting a whole what is it 1200 a whole 1200 pound horse tube it's worth. a 1500 pound horse tube oh, yeah. with one goat but she was fine she had diarrhea for a day and she was fine <laughs> yeah it was an accident um okay so what we're going to do now is i so we are in and again this is something that is that is can be controversial controversial um we live in an area that is selenium deficient and so i dose my dose um about every three months ish three or four months with BOCI. now this is a prescription from the vet the vet knows i'm using it he gives it to me i buy it from him um this is to ensure that they have they're getting the selenium that they need because we live in a deficient area so i'm going to give it sub q in the fat here behind the elbow okay just grab that in right so we got her BOCI shot done all right, sorry for the interruption. The kids came in and asked a question. Um, so what we're gonna do next after the BOCI shot is I give them, we orally dose with, um, with 
I have a brain fart. Copper boluses. And so everybody does this differently. If you were to look on any of like the Go pages on Facebook, if you were to Google it, they're gonna tell you to like stick it in a banana or a Fig Newton or something. That has never worked for me. I don't know if boars just aren't good tree eaters or they're not good tree eaters for me. Um, but so what we're gonna do, this is how, this is how I've discovered to do it that works for us. It is not the easy way, and I'm not going to pretend for a second that it's the easy way. Um, but what we do is we cut the top off of a. Oh, I just dropped a bowl. Of, we're gonna we cut the top off a syringe, and then I squirt a little bit of gogurt in the tube, and I suck it down. I'm gonna set this down for a second, and then I break. So these are actually I should say these are two gram capsules. I grabbed the wrong ones on accident, so. I'm actually going to give her four grams, that's the normal adult dose per 100 pounds of copper. And the purpose of this is you want them to, and it's like a little, little sandwich here, you top it off with yogurt. Um, you want them to embed in the rumen. She's probably gonna fight me on this. I know, you hate my guts right now. So we can get it in there. She's chewing on my fingers. Oh, this darn bar is a pain in the butt. Yeah, normally we do this stuff in the shoot with the herd. Okay, come on, Mom. And Missy's a really sweet goat. She's really starting to come around, but I got um, it in. There we go. she has not been worked with um, as normal. She was kept back a, to be a doe in the herd um, at the Pitzer Ranch. And so she hasn't had as much, you know, lead time and work time. So she's she's coming around. I don't think she has lice, I've checked her. I don't think she has mites, but I figure this is the best time as ever just to clear her out if she does have anything. I'm gonna give her five cc's, uh, pour it down her top line. Okay, we got, so that's pretty simple. Got that done. And then, last, girls, what are you doing? Be good goats. Um, last but not least, so these two, and I'm not gonna, pretend to be able to say their names, um, but these two are two vaccines that we use um, during breeding season. We give them once a year, and what they do is they are meant to uh, combat any of the abortion storm type illnesses. And so we've, thankfully, knock on wood, we've never had an issue with abortions. We've never had an abortion storm before. Um, I'm gonna make sure that, Yeah, this is two mils sub so cute. Okay, that's what I thought. And this is in the neck. So we're gonna get this one. Two mils of this one subcutaneously in the neck. Okay, and then the last one. Now, I'm pretty sure, let me read this one with five mils. Yeah, okay, so we get five mils of the Campylobacter, okay, and this one, it says on here somewhere, I didn't have a chance to read it, so this one can be a little bit of a booger because this is an oil-based uh, suspension, and so I used to give it in the neck, but then after I would give it, it would leave some wicked welts that, I have one doe two years later, she still has a welt from where I gave this sub -Q. and so I like to again give this one in the fat part behind the elbow because it leaves such terrible welts, yeah, it'll make it look like a CL knot or and something like that, and it's not. It's not, but they stick around for a while um, when they do leave a knot. So anyway, that that is it. So we will put her in with one of the boys, probably with Brett, with our D&D uh, &D power grid. He's a square power, um, a square power son. We'll put her in here in about a month and hope for some April babies. So with that, she's ready to go. So we'll catch you in the next video.